reboot, rewire railways to sustenance. I come to you as a railwayman for life. Indian railways, which you can love or hate, but cannot ignore. I'm not such an accomplished speaker, so I borrow a lot from wisdom down the ages. My poet uncles, I, as I call them, fortunately for you, we are bound by a TEDx time regime, but unfortunately for you, since I am a railwayman, I have an inherent right to be derailed. Indian Railways, a legacy and history of 170 years. A lot of romance that goes with it. As a child, your scramble for the window seat as the marvel and the magic of India passed you by. The hard work, the grind, the indolence, the sloth, the celebration, the joy, the mourning, the pathos, the rivers, the mountains, deserts, bridges, unending fields. As you peeped from an open door, the snaking train behind you gave you goosebumps to the extent that your journey becomes the objective, not the destination. That's the magic of Indian Railways and also it's a great leveler as the richest to the poorest still stand on the same platform to take the next train. I'm reminded of Antonio in the Tempest, when he says that the travelers, the travelers never did lie, but fools at home condemn them. If you are unable to appreciate the, the, the fantastical things you see from the window of an Indian railway train, then perhaps you are a prisoner of your own contradictions and conflicts. But I'm not here to talk to you about romance of Indian Railways. I'm here to say as to why our trains after 70 years of independence look the same. Some changes, AC trains brought, technology brought, but same recall, the color has changed from Gulf red to blue, but they look the same. Why not a technologically advanced, aesthetically superior, faster train, why not even the homegrown train 18 in larger numbers? India, if we are going to be a developed economy in 10 years, 15 years, is this the way we are going to carry our common people? Grizzly and grimy stations, unorganized, two, three of them remodeled, but the stress on five-star hotels or fancy outlets, why not functionally efficient stations, passenger friendly, which just serve their pur purpose efficiently? How do we treat our cleaning staff and how do we do our cleaning? Some improvements have, have happened, but is this the sign of an aspirational India of a decade from now? A porter whom the British called coolies box next to you if you have luggage and not just a trolley based luggage, three tier, four tier of luggage on his head with his necks bending. Is this what an aspirational India is going to see in 10 years? Or the hand luggage or the hand trolleys carrying luggage and parcels in, in, in many tiers with three, four, five people pushing them on the platform and telling the travelers, shouting at them to make way. Is this how we are going to travel in a developed India? There are a thousand makeovers which are possible. Mobile applications, battery cards and whatnot. I come to you not covering the entire gamut, but simply with the proof of the pudding, talking about what we were able to do as a team, which is a glimpse of what is possible to make railways professionally better and with sustainability. Before I go there, I'll talk a little bit about Aak Nirbharta. It started with Make in India to make India a factory of the world. 
then came covid and it was turned into atmanirbharta by the government but have you seen these lions roar or only purse because the government has talked about fiscal stimulus easy loans purchasing power of people demand in the market but the spirit of atmanirbharta has been missing and what is that it all begins with an idea it goes to a concept and when it is tested in the market in practical reality to have an outcome of value is an completion of innovation and when then it innovation is used to develop a knowledge or skill or uh, with inputs expertise techniques methods processes equipment and artistry mind you to bring a product is what is technology we need to have a system of encouraging these innovations to convert them into technology and then manage and nurture them but with ownership because ownership brings pride and pride brings to you the spirit to excel yourself beyond your capability you have heard of this term transfer of technology which i think is an oxymoron because tran technology is a creation it lives in the mind and the heart of the creator it cannot be transferred there is no technology to transfer it we have been going through this transfer of technology only to go back to the provider of technology every 15 years we have to create our own good or bad failure or success the failures are going to be the stepping stone to success but it must be our own Firaq Gorakhpuri has a couplet which says, "Mere sheer aay na khane me, tere pe shumar ada oke, magar esti bhi hai koi ada jo rahegi seen aay raaz me." The the essence of a technology lives in the recesses of my heart, and I am not going to transfer it. It must live in my heart. And ownership, ownership, as I told you, brings pride. so technology without ownership has no meaning i have a simple question when i talk and that is beyond technology to do any transformation anywhere what do you need first and foremost all this vision leadership resources and so on but much more than that you need to love what you do you need to love the people you work with those above those below you need to love the organization you work for as jigar muradabadi has said ek love se mohabbat ka adna ye fasana hai simte to dile aashiq phaile to zamana hai this word love has a brief meaning if it shrinks it's the heart of a lover but if it expands it is the world if you have to make the world your your own you have to concentrate on your human resource irrespective of all the where with all and all the artificial intelligence without your human resource with you you are not going anywhere you have to break the straight jackets of feudal propriety the shackles of protocol go for empathy and openness warmth and trust what you saw in the earlier picture was 12000 faces in a frame nobody above or nobody below that i had in the integral coach factory including myself and the lowest worker there and the ideation it cannot be ordered it cannot be mandated cannot be dismissed cannot be patronized it has to be simply encouraged because every person is brimming with ideas jo phool hai to khile जो शरर है तो भड़के शरर मीन्स स्पार्क तरह तरह की तलब तेरे रंग लब से है बट यू कैन कमांड इट इफ यू हैव दी माइंड टू इनकरेज इट टू इवेल्यूएट इट टू नर्चर इट नेवर रिजेक्ट इट इफ इट इट्स टू एबल टू एडॉप्ट इट दिस इज द बैकग्राउंड एंड देन आई कम टू वॉट यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वॉज द फर्स्ट इंडिजिनस सेमी हाई स्पीड ट्रेन ऑफ इंडिया developed by integral coach factory when i was the leader there in 18 months as the introducer told you it was something just a train but the celebration and the love it got from the country including the prime minister himself is because it was something 
which was made by Indians for themselves. But where are we? After three and a half years, only two have been there. I am reminded of Portia. To merely know what is good to do is not enough. You must have the resolve to do it. And then, suddenly change of regime and now we have announcement of 400 such trains in three years. Welcome. Jo ruke to kohe gara the ham, jo chale to jaan se guzar gaye. When I stopped, I was a big mountain. When I started, it was like a like I, I gave up my life. But it's not our time now to question ki banegi, ki nahi banegi. The question is, ki how will it be built? Not in three years, maybe in six years, but it should be built. Almost as if the train should have now wings as you see on the screen and it should be done at that speed. But before I talk about this train, I'll come to the common man. The common man must travel in comfort in this aspirational India. He may not be able to pay much. But your most profitable coach is the AC 3 tier and the AC chair car, which always already carries now 83 people. I can change that design to carry 120 people, enhance the capacity by 50-60%, reduce the fare by 30-40%. to 40%, Bring it in the reach of the common man and let every Indian travel in air-conditioned comfort, maybe a little cramp. If some common man, say migrant laborers, are not able to pay even that reduced fare in every route, run one non-AC train. But make sure, through the design of the coach and it's possible, that everyone gets a seat or a berth. Nobody stands and nobody travels, as I said, like sardines. Then I come to these 400 trains for which I have this formula and that's for upper-end travelers because that will bring revenue to railways. 130, 140 can be made in integral coach factory, assisted by two other factories, but mainly at ICF. But for that, we need more better vision. Merely bringing day trains like Vande Bharat will not help because you have to replace Rajdhanis with these trains. So you must have a sleeper version and start working on it now. Because if you work now, by next year, you can start putting these trains on the line. Then you should have the aluminium coaches, which are lighter and more energy efficient. And I must go to that. Not debate about it, debate it after we have done it, only with a caveat that it should be given to, since country does, still does not have the capability to a contractor, to a supplier who works with our staff for design as well as manufacturing. And by the time the contract is over, our people are enabled that next time around I need such a train, it will be designed entirely in India, manufactured in India totally. That's called real sense transfer of technology, if you if you like to call it that. And the last, another 130, 140 can be made through private train operation pro, uh, project, which was mooted by railways, but derailed due to bureaucracy. These are the, what you see on the screen are simple provisions which would, would, would make this contract work and we can bring these trains. I come to this when I was divisional railway manager in Bangalore. I, what always pained me was, was the way we treated our voters and bargained with them. I tried to introduce these uh, air, airport-like trolleys, but it did not work. They thought we were attacking their livelihood. So I called all of them, 50 semi-literate, illiterate quotas to my office. They had never gone to the divisional office, let alone the chamber of divisional railway manager, which was big enough to accommodate 60, 60 of them. I gave them tea. I said, I'm not hitting at your livelihood. I'm providing you dignity, and I'm providing dignity to myself, to Indian Railway. You will not carry any luggage on your head. You will carry it in the cart and passengers will pay you what they pay you today. It's a matter of dignity. Slowly they got convinced and in four stations, Bangalore, Bangalore City, Krishna Rajapuram and Yashwanpur, we were able to do it. Don't ask me what has happened to it now, but it was only a proof of the pudding. At that time, head load was totally banned. My next item, when I was in Sikandrabad, my team, we simply said that we'll provide self-esteem to these cleanliness workers through protective gear and machines. And they will work with dignity. And what they did, one part of the station platform 10 and, and, and next to it, 
became the cleanest platform in Indian railways through their effort only because we gave them respectability. This is the way to go. Things have improved, but it needs bigger replication. We also in Bangalore and Sikandarabad, we did away with all these hand carts and provided battery car so that luggage and parcels were carried again with dignity and without disturbing the passengers. I come to a factory environment, as somebody said earlier, but simply by providing large scale solar installations all over the roofs and ceilings, all over the sheds in the factory, in integral coach factory, we were able to make it carbon negative, producing more regenerative energy than consuming it. And this is what every factory of Indian railways, or rather every factory of Indian in, in India can do if they make up their mind to do that. We revived this lake, which was smelly and dying for the last 40 years. Earlier, birds used to come there through community effort and government spending. We revived this lake. And in 2019, when every when Chennai lost all water, this lake still had water. And if I'm lying to you, these group of pelicans are not big because they descend on this lake three times a year, even today. I will simply say that Picasso has said that art is a way to wash away the dust of everyday life from your soul, but it builds teamwork and it builds motivation. It's a lot of public art wherever I work should be encouraged. And last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, any organization, any country which does not respect its women is not going anywhere. Because frailty, thy name is not woman. What you see on the screen is a group of 30 women aged 23 to 57, supervised by a lady building a coach entirely on their own in integral coach factory. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not something I've seen even in Germany or Japan. You can see Helga women doing their individual work, but this is what our ladies can are capable of if you give them not segregation, but empower. And with this, I come to the end of my talk today. I, my message to my real women, or rather everyone is look at yourselves. Solutions lie with you, not others. Go out and do with empathy, commitment and excitement and the joyous soul of doing would lie with you. And what I'm saying today, ladies and gentlemen, the poet Faraz has said, what I'm talking today may sound strange to you, but you will find it in the curriculum of Indian Railways 10 years from now. Thank you very much.